Hello Year 10, this is Mr Lloyd and I will be talking you through all the lessons while school is closed. You can expect to have two lessons uploaded each week and you will have five school days to complete each one. For example, this lesson was uploaded on Monday the 20th of April and you have until Friday the 24th of April to complete all the tasks. Each lesson should take about an hour. Before you complete this lesson, you need to complete the Knowledge Organiser quiz. This can be found on the Google form labelled 04 Knowledge Quiz. This Knowledge Quiz quiz tests your knowledge of the lessons you will have completed before the Easter holiday. As school continues to be closed, all the lessons over the next few weeks will help you consolidate your knowledge of the German unit that we studied in Year 9. As you will be completing your GCSE exams next year, you will need to have this knowledge in order to do well in the assessment. Hopefully, much of this content will seem familiar, and by the end of the lockdown, you will feel much more confident in your understanding of Germany. This lesson looks at the political revolt that happened against the Weimar Republic between 1919 and 1924. We need to remember that in 1919, a new constitution had been created, meaning Germany was now a republic, ruled by a president rather than a king, with the Reichstag being controlled by the chancellor. Most people in Germany supported the new constitution and wanted the government to be successful. However, the republic was set up at a difficult time and had a number of opponents. Firstly, on the left wing of politics was the Communist Party. They believed the country should be run on behalf of the workers. They wanted the government to run all farms and businesses for the benefit of all people. They believed wealth should be shared out equally. Secondly, in the centre of politics were the parties that supported the Weimar Republic. The main party were the Social Democrats, who had lots of support mainly from the working class. They wanted to help the country to return to normal after the First World War. Finally, on the right wing of politics were the Nazi party, who believed that Germany should have one strong leader. They wanted to ignore the Treaty of Versailles and build a strong army. There were also some army generals who served the Kaiser and did not like the new democratic system of government. Within these groups on the extreme left and right were people who wanted to overthrow the government by force if necessary. You are going to look at these attempts to overthrow the government by different groups. The first group to look at were the Spartacist League. They were a communist group led by Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. They did not trust the government and wanted a full scale communist revolution like the one that had happened in 1917. The second group you need to know are the Freikorps, led by Wolfgang Kupp. The Freikorps were retired soldiers who were extremely loyal to their leader, Wolfgang Kupp. In 1920, the government decided to disband the Freikorps as it wanted to reduce the size of the army. The Berlin Freikorps refused to break up and they created a plan to seize control of the government and form a new government led by Wolfgang Kupp. The final group you need to be aware of are the Nazi party and their attempt to seize control of the government in Munich. In 1923, Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party, and General Ludendorff attempted the Munich Putsch. They believed that democracy led to a weak government and thought there should be one political party with one leader. Their plan was to overthrow the government and put Hitler and Ludendorff in charge of the country. I have given you a general overview of the events and the people you are going to look at. Your first task is to read through the scans of the textbook I have attached and complete the table. This table will help you to structure and focus your, your reading, meaning you're able to gather more detail and understand. In the boxes, you need to write down when the event occurred, explain what happened, explain the outcome and whether you think it was a success or a failure. You should complete this directly onto the Google document as you have a copy each. Your teacher will be able to check your work 
and make sure you have taken out the correct information. This task will take about 15 minutes. You should pause the presentation now, complete the task and then return to the narrated PowerPoint. Now that you have read through the information on each of the different revolts, you need to show that, you're under, that you understand the impact these events had. In order to do this, you should answer the questions on a document labelled Questions on Uprisings. Your teacher will mark this work, so make sure you explain fully and use enough details to demonstrate what you have learned. This task should take about 15 minutes. Complete it now and return to listen to the next part of the, of the narrated PowerPoint. OK, well done on completing that. For this task, you need to answer each of the exam questions. These are really short knowledge based questions that demonstrate to the examiner everything that you know. You should write your answers onto the document titled 04 Four Mark Exam Questions. The questions are there for you and you can write your answers underneath them. They should be about five or six sentences long, so a developed paragraph. For each one, focus on what the Fry Corps did in the revolt. Your teacher will be marking these and giving you a mark of four for each one. This should take you no longer than 10 minutes, five minutes for each question. Pause the presentation now and complete this task. Well done. This is your final task. This is a longer exam question that requires you to write about three paragraphs. Use your knowledge from this lesson to write a fully developed answer. The Google Doc provides you with sentence starters and a clear structure to follow. Your teacher will be marking this and giving you feedback to improve your answer. Make sure you're using the sentence starters and for your explanation that you are using TAT. This means that as a result and therefore this will ensure that you are fully explaining your points and gaining maximum marks from the exam question. OK, now you've completed all the written tasks. Just as one last check, complete the exit ticket quiz and you can check your knowledge and your understanding from this lesson. Good luck. <laughs>